Indoor Arena here in Birmingham. Now, the thing that's really caused a stir this year is our new look eliminator. Just as our contenders think they know it, we go changing one or two things, and it really is quite awesome. And once again this year, we'll be offering a thousand pounds to the holder of the fastest eliminator time. If you think that sounds great, just listen to what our champions will each receive this year. They will both get and drive off with one of these fabulous top-of-the-range sporting cabriolets and £1,000. Both of our runners-up, they will get a dream holiday on the paradise island of the Camors. So let's meet tonight's contenders. They are Audrey Garland. And Nun Evans. of course, but uh, we've actually had a record number of contender applications from Ireland, so Gladiators must be pretty big over there. It is, yeah, it's huge over there. Everybody wants to be on the show. Now listen, tell us a bit about yourself, what you do and where you're from. Well, I come from Dublin and Ireland. <laughs> I'm a fitness instructor. And I know you're a bit of a tough cookie because you take on things like rugby clubs and sort of hard fellas. Yeah, I would teach rugby clubs and football teams and circuit training. My goodness. Now, you've got a fantastic fan club over there. And there's... At home, you'll be hearing this almost silent drumming and beating going on. What's that all about? Yeah, that's Paddo up there on a the bar on. He's keeping everybody going at home. He certainly is. It's absolutely fantastic. We're pleased to see them and we're pleased to see you. So the very best of luck. Let's hear it for Audrey Garland. <laughs> Nun, uh, I've had a look around the arena. I've seen your supporters. Can you explain this uh, monster business? Um, it's my nickname with the girls who I play rugby with. They call me Nonster the Monster for some reason. You still haven't worked out yet? No, I haven't got a clue why, because I'm so timid. <laughs> yeah. Okay, tell us a little bit about where you come from and what you do. Um, I'm from Ponte de Lys, near Swansea. Um, I live in Cardiff at the moment. Um, I just got a new job in Cardiff presenting um, rugby. Um, and I used to be a PE teacher at Camer School, and they're all the kids are here today. It's really a question of where you're concerned of what haven't you achieved in sport, because uh, I've read the list and it's amazing what you've achieved. Yes, I've won a couple of silver medals in the Commonwealth Judo Championships, um, play rugby for Wales, <laughs> there's some of the Welsh team up there. Um, and recently I've become British Junior Powerlifting Champion with the World Championships coming up. So you must be really looking forward to this evening. Yeah, I can't wait. Really, I've been looking forward to this now for a long time. It's just, the waiting's over, and tonight's the night. Well, we all wish you the best of luck. Let's hear it for Nun! Now it's time to meet the guys. Tonight they are Piers Bryan... ..and Matthew Butler. I can tell it's going to be one of those nights. What's with the hat? Uh, it's my disguise, my disguise. I'm on the run from the, uh, from the secret uh, KGB. You are very confusing because you've done so many things in your life and you've been so many places and speak so many strange languages and one thing and another. Tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, I work out in America. I teach uh, water skiing. I'm a director of water skiing out there on the summer camp. I've got um, 300 kids to look after. I've also done a little bit of travelling. I lived in Miami for nearly a year. Uh, this is all after I left uh, my studies, because otherwise everyone thinks I'm a, I'm a total layabout. But I do, I do try and do some work. And you've, you've done some work, in fact, for charity, haven't you? You've raised some money for charity. Yes, I have indeed, actually. We've raised around £600. I have to finalise with my mum, who's over there, exactly how much we've raised. But uh, for kids with disabilities in sport, about, about £600. Good on you. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you in action tonight, and I'm sure your crowd's going to be behind you. So let's hear it for Piers Bryant. <laughs> Matthew, uh, I have to say, just looking at you, uh, are you going to take this seriously tonight? Me? Serious? Never. You know, I, I don't take anything seriously. I think if you take things too seriously, then it's, um, you know, it's, it's wrong. You've got to take the mickey. Matthew, tell us a little bit about where you're from and what you do. Well, I, I've just come from the loop because I'm very nervous. <laughs> yes, but seriously. <laughs> seriously, no. I've, uh, I've just finished a three-year drama degree at Goldsmiths, and there's a few of them up there. All right. And originally I come from Brighton, so I think there's a few of the TFU up there as well. Yeah! Yeah. So it would be true to say you, you like performing in front of the camera? No, no, I'm really shy, really timid. Yeah, of course I like the performance. 
<laughs> okay, that's enough from Matthew. Let's hear it for Matthew! Oh, what a sensible start to the evening. Well, the girls are ready for their first event, so let the games begin. First up on Jewel, it's Audrey! She's going to be facing Rio! Over to John Anderson. Contender! Seems ready to me, and her stats certainly confirm that. Dublin-born Audrey stands a metre 70 and weighs in at 59 kilos. But across the other side of the dueling platform, Rio is 17 centimetres taller, 24 kilos heavier. Looks like Audrey's got her work cut out in this opener. Three, two, one. Let's start the rumble and see who's first to tumble. Rio swinging him in, does more batting than a fishmonger. Audrey's in big trouble, and Audrey is out of there. Blasted to oblivion by Rio. Mum and Dad, Pearl and Joe, know it was six, seven, eight. Six blows, seven seconds, and Audrey eight, Matt. Audrey, very, very disappointing for you, but um, perhaps also quite inevitable. Yeah, oh, God, she got me a blow there. I'm seeing stars after it. Yeah, I mean, that's desperately unfair of you to hit her across the head. There. What were you trying to... What were you thinking of? Well, she's actually got quite a big target to hit, as you haven't noticed. I'm a big girl, but she did ever so well. I think she did. You did do very well, but I mean, no points on this occasion. Thank you, Lord. It certainly is. Let's hear it for Audrey and Rio. Uh -huh. Next up on Jewel, it's Nong. She's going to be battling it out against Rocket. Over to John Anderson. Contender! While John Anderson exercises his vocal cords, let's see what Non will be exercising in the stats department. A metre 60 tall, 60 kilos weight-wise, whereas the rocket is 22 centimetres taller and 17 kilos heavier. Three, two, Rocket launches the attack. Non is a rugby playing, powerlifting, Welsh speaking judo champion, so some of that's going to come in useful up there. Ten points for a knockout, five if she can stay the distance. Piling it in. Rocket rocks, but Non leaning in. Loses a stick. John Addison stops it. Non doubled up on the platform. Sister Maya can hardly cope with the drama. Rocket under pressure, smacks a belter into Non's chop, struggles with her balance, but Non topples forward, loses a stick and the points. After those dynamic duels, neither girl gets the chance to open their account. Audrey nil, non, none. We now move into the men's event with Piers. And he's going to be facing one of our new gladiators, Kong. Over to John Anderson. Earlier, Piers told me he's under no illusions as to what lies ahead of him. People have been asking me how fit you have to be for gladiators. Well, let me tell you, you have got to be really fit. You don't appreciate it when you see it on the show, but I've now learned to appreciate it because I've done the trials and all the training, and the games now are just unbelievable. These guys are 18 stone. They're out there to mash you, and if you're not fit, you're just going to get crushed, and there's no place to hide. Is this the calm before the storm, and can Piers weather it? the answer, a real end of the Piers show. Four and a half seconds and Khan crushes the contender. Oh, nice dancing, but I'd get a refund on that hair perm. You lost your balance there, I mean, it must be quite awesome standing up there and looking into his eyes, uh, lovingly. Uh, he's, he's one big guy. Um, <laughs> I took one great big blow to the head and uh, the next minute uh, I, think I felt about three or four more coming. What can I say? I went down a bit early. You did go down a little bit early. Huge congratulations, well done. I just got a little impatient waited up there. You are very, very large, and I mean, he's a little bit slimmer than you, and you just went in there and knocked him out. You did your job. Let's hear it for Khan and for Piers. No points. No points yet, but there's still plenty to play for. Last up, it's Matthew. And he's going to be facing Rhino. Contender ready! Matthew in 
Fine is unprepared for this encounter and the enormity of the task ahead of him. Can't blame him for that. No one stayed more than 10 seconds on the platform so far. Can he set about caging this raging rhino? Three, two, well, Matthew one. taller than Rhino, but Rhino with a lower centre of gravity. Rhino displaying a variety of swings, determined to overcome the contender with a combination of style and quick stick work. Turning up the gas now. Oh, yes! Matthew doubled up, in trouble and straight in the chops. Rhino stings him, and with a right. Oh, Matthew wisely calls it a day. Rhino rules again. Good effort from Matthew, rewarded with a thumbs down, and Rhino completes the Gladiator's clean sweep. Oh, Matthew, it was kind of, um, useless, meaningless, and, um, I don't know, it didn't last very long. I got you a flower. Hello. You're lovely. I need a can opener to get that helmet off after it. Oh. But uh, you took a few blows. Um, yeah, it was hard man. Nice one, Rhino. Let's hear it for Matthew and for Rhino. Thanks for the flower. After one event, Piers and Matthew remain on zero. Hey, seems like Glad's sunshine training sessions have paid off. is one of the premier skills required of our gladiators and here is Alberto to show us how they do it here at Coco Beach. Go on Alberto, up you get. Well that's Mauritian style, pretty impressive I say. But in order to get the gladiators training the old British way, we had to send them to the other side of the island. Hang on honey, I'm on my way. Yeah, I hate this rock climbing, especially heights. Don't worry Wolf, you'll never attain any. What? <laughs> that's okay then. Apart from being great practice for the gladiator wall, rock climbing also promotes muscles in the arms and the legs. It's great for coordination, but like any outdoor sport, it's very important to look after safety and wear all the correct safety gear. Here we have Warrior modeling all the gear you need for safe climbing. There's the rope, which is tied to other climbers and to pitons. There's the safety harness, which is attached to your climbing partner. There's the safety helmet, which is essential protection for the head. There's the climbing boots. Here. Have you got a cramp one? No. Just the way my foot stuck in the rope. <laughs> you get it? The way my foot stuck in the rope. Just be the way I don't tell them. Over to our next event. Our first female contender is Audrey. And she'll be up against Lightning and Rio. Also, Falcon and Go! Audrey starts her first cannonball run, a pair of points for every successful crossing of the bridge, avoiding the avalanche of boulders swung by the gladiators. And there's a two-pointer. Audrey's been an athlete since she was five, but she's never before sprinted under these conditions. The glads have yet to get into the swing of this event. Audrey clocks up a couple more. Audrey again. And this is looking like a walk in the park for her. The glads have got to start getting their stuff together. Six points for the pot so far. The Irish eyes are smiling at this. Audrey's hit and run has plenty of run and precious little hits. Two more, time up, and Audrey pockets an easy eight. Stayed on the bridge, out of trouble. Mum Pearl knows her daughter's a diamond, and Dad Joe, well happy with that result. Audrey's timing was first class when it came to posting the points. It was just the Glads who failed to stamp their mark. Our second contender to face the Gladiators is none! Over to John Anderson. Contender ready! Gladiators ready! Three, two, one! Non knows the Glads are going to raise their game. Oh, she cops a broadside from Falcon, brought to her knees, but carries on to claim those two points. Back again for more, and this time it's the speed that carries her across. Third run, looking to get her timing just right, avoiding conflicting traffic. Oh, good skills, a little duck, and there's another two, fourth bridge now. After that opening side swipe, Non looks to have got across this event very well. Two points. Can she clock up another couple before the hooter? Oh, yes, she can. High-scoring stuff from the contenders. The Gladiators couldn't get their teeth into that bridge work at all. 
took their aim, but Non was long gone. And boyfriend Richard thinks Non was bombed. Here she comes for a chat with Jezza, leaving the glads nonplussed. Have you come, then? I suppose, really, with your rugby background, you were hoping to do well at this event. Yeah, hoping to pick up quite a lot of points. Um, it's nice to have a break from the actual contact games, <laughs> but I enjoyed that game. You were sprinting, ducking and diving. Yeah, I think I was lucky on a couple of occasions. Rio nearly got me there at the end. Just managed to duck underneath the ball. Lucky or not, you'll be pleased to know that you scored 10 points! So that puts some colour in their cheeks. Both girls finally off the mark. Audrey with eight, Non with ten. And so now we move into the men's event. Standing at the foot of the wall, it's Piers! And he's going to be chased by Hunter! Also getting ready to climb, it's Matthew! Ooh. He's going to be pursued by Ace! Ego complex. Certainly not an inferiority complex. And to illustrate this, well, a man's got to make a living. I hope they keep the window shut. A life modelling pays the bills, but it's not as easy as you may think. Uh, you have to take your clothes off in front of a room full of artists and keep a pose for up to 45 minutes. So without your clothes on, it can get pretty chilly. But, Ulrika, if you wanted to try your hand at it, I've got all you need. That's a piece of paper and a crayon, of course. Three, two, one! Right, the guys have ten seconds to secure a lead up this wall before the two takedown specialists get to work. Piers in red, Matthew in blue. Neither of them are wallflower, but it's the gladiators who have the wall power. Hunter on Piers, ace behind Matthew, and oh, the mere presence of ace is enough, and Hunter's gone, no, he's let Piers get through his fingers. Hunter back to square one, and Piers looks set for some points. Hunter will be anxious to save some face and be back on the case in double quick time. Oh, look at him go! The Piers pressure is on now. Can he make the summit? No! Hunter wrenches Piers from the wall and makes amends. Hunter has incredible speed when scaling the escarpment. Bit of a butterfingers on his first attempt, but next time he was like a Sherpa, only sharper. After two events, the boys' scores stay the same. Piers nil, Matthew nil. Well, I'm lucky for our male contenders there, but huge congratulations to our gladiators. Join us for more action after the break here on Gladiators. Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham. You've seen lots of action so far, and you're about to see plenty more. <laughs> scoring with the blue balls is none. And scoring with the red balls is Audrey. And they'll be facing gladiators Bogue, Lightning and Vulcan. Over to John Anderson. Contenders ready! Gladiators ready! And this is one encounter the Welsh rugby players looking forward to. I'm looking forward to playing uh, the gauntlet and powerball with my expertise in rugby. Uh, if I can beat a lot of wussies in lycra and makeup, with dyed blonde hair and false tans, and I think I'll ever be able to pull a red shirt over my head again. Three, two, one! Oh, Non gets it on, bypasses Falcon. Vogue can't contain her, two points. Looks like Non's on song. Audrey empty-handed. Not again! Vogue on patrol. Lightning and making Non eat her words before speeding her a hefty helping of match. Audrey back for another try. Goes left to evade lightning, but the bombshell explodes on her. Non manages to con away past Falcon and Vogue steams into Non. Her memory's long and John Anderson's gone and blown his whistle. You do not tackle when the contender does not have a ball. Well, there you are, Vogue getting the full pointy finger telling off from John for this bit of afters following the basket from Non. There are 35. So far, the sun shone on Non. Falcons on station. It's 4 0 to Non. Here's Audrey for the trip before Lightning's tackle. Non with Falcon floored. 
Both forcing a wide, but Lightning again says, so long, non. Audrey getting some angst from Falcon, can't get to grips with the game because the Glads are getting to grips with her. Non very strong, 20 seconds to go, still plenty of scoring potential. The contenders, one-ended. Non gives both the slip, and Falcon flies in, but Non baskets a three-pointer. The rugby playing powerlifters managed to prize seven points from the Glads, but I think that's about it. Three baskets in 60 seconds is pretty good going. Both pushing Non back to where she came from, and the Hooter sounds the end of the action. Non's fans in full voice. There's Levely. A pleasing performance from Non. Had the Gladiators at full stretch to keep her scoring down. Those rugby skills certainly coming into play on the powerball pitch. Centre basket. After three events, Audrey stays on eight while Non moves her score along to 17. And now it's the turn of the men. Scoring with the blue balls is Matthew. And scoring with the red balls is Piers. And they'll be facing Gladiators Ace, Rhino and Khan. Over to John Anderson. in red facing Khan, and Khan wins it. Ace discards Matthew to the deck. The guys are going to have to pull the stops out if they're going to break their scoring duck so far. Matthew reloads. Khan on the case, chews him up, spits him out. Piers with superb acceleration. Oh, plants one in the pot for two points. Great move by Piers. Matthew again looking to follow suit, but the ace won't let him. Piers pulling back from Khan, but Rhino charges him down. It's a rough, tough time for the guys out there tonight. Matthew tries to lob one, but more in hope than expectation. Khan flattens him anyway. John had words. Khan can't do that. Here's another foray into the firing line. The guy's one-ended. 20 seconds to go. Oh, he tried to throw one home, catches the rim. Here's in the mighty grip of Rhino. Rhino spins him down. The guy's energy level's beginning to drop now. And frankly, who can blame them after Rhino, Khan and Ace have been up and at him for a full minute? Matthew gesturing. Piers getting on with it, and I must say, Piers fully deserves his points, trying to take the game to the Glads, whereas Matthew's doubtful run and lob technique was never really going to pay off. As his fans very lightly suspected. Well, guys, um, they may be big guys, but uh, they're not as fast as you two. Well, no, but I'll tell you what, how quickly did you run out of steam on this game? Doesn't matter what sort of breakfast you had, just doesn't seem to happen. A few balls in, Whoa. <laughs> and I have to say, a lack of commitment from you on certain occasions, standing there, dithering around. When there's three of them there, the lack of commitment goes right down. <laughs> Let's just bring John Anderson in and find out what the scores were. Right, this time not a very high-scoring game. Matthew failed to score. Piers, two points. Well done! Let's hear it for Piers and Matthew. After three events, let's confirm those figures. Piers has two, Matthew still to score. Back to the sun-soaked climbing course. Cool. A lot worse than last year, you know, Vogue. Yeah, I know. It's a really crumbly, weather-beaten granite face. Oh, it's terrible. But right at the top, the air's gone really thin. Look at it. Yeah, I know. I'm glad we don't have to look at that while we're climbing the rock. I know. Yeah, you two say something. Yes. No. Oh. No. Time now for our next event. Standing at the foot of the pyramid is Audrey and Nong. They're going to be facing Rebel and Siren. Over to John Anderson. Contenders ready! And a new rule for this season. If the contenders reach that red step, they can't be tackled by the Glads. So, 60 seconds to step lively to the top. First, they get 10 points, second, five. Oh, Rebel versus Audrey. Oh, non sticks one on Rebel. And Audrey can't make it pay because Rebel's recovery is incredible. I'll go to the foot of our stairs. Siren also takes Non for a roll down the side. Non trying to escape. Brother Orway telling her to kick Goyen. Non's free to try for the top of the pyramid, but there's no point for her while the Siren's about. Siren's certainly proving her worth in this, her first season. 
Audrey extricates herself from Rebel, looking to outflank her, but Rebel with a flyer, and Audrey goes a pearler. Not looking to outstep Siren, but the Gladiator's there to kick sand in her face at the base of the pyramid. Even the fittest contenders have been crying for their mummies on this pyramid. Audrey can get the height, but can't make the final push for the top. If Audrey's been rolled by Rebel up there, Non's been rocked by the sheer stamina of Siren. Siren using anything and everything to stop her getting past. The clock's going to deny the contenders any points on this pyramid, and it's certainly sat their strength for the rest of the competition. Audrey, it was everywhere you went, Rebel was there. She was all over me. Uh, I know now why you're an Olympic 200 meter runner. <laughs> Rebel, easy, easy event for you? I don't know about that. I'm used to running 22.7 seconds, but I kept it going, but that's hard. Listen to my voice. <laughs> Woo! Let's hear it for Audrey and Rebel! Well, Mum, it has to be said that you're a feisty little one. Yeah, I was trying to get it off me, but uh, she kept hold of the hard grip, trying to push it off, but it was difficult. Once I got up, she got hold of my leg again, so it was harder than I thought it was going to be. Well, I mean, there, wasn't, there didn't appear to be a great deal of movement. There was an awful lot of kissing and cuddling going on. Well, I'm telling you, I think this might be her gum shield. Oh, say no more. <laughs> Let's hear it for Siren and Non. And Non scoring event for Non, and no points for Audrey means the scores remain the same. 8-17. That Matthew's a case. He does love a good laugh. Ah, vastly hearty, shiver me timbers. Watch out, Wolf. This old sea dog is coming to get you. Ah, ah, ah. Who would have got to be easier ways of getting into the pub than this? Betty, make mine a pint. Put a cherry in it for me, won't you? <laughs> oh, spare my aching ribs. <laughs> Three, two, one! So it's Wolf on Matthew, Cobra on Piers. And we know Piers is quick and he's nearly at the red step. Oh, he's there! And Cobra steams in for a tackle. That's not allowed. John Anderson blows up. Piers' girlfriend Meg and his mum, Rosemary, know Cobra's in for it now. You know the, the new rules, and the new rules are clear. Once the contender has reached the red band, they are safe to run to the top. They are not allowed to be tackled. You are disqualified. You to the top. Go. There's that pointy finger again. The rules are not just clear, they're quite clear. 50 seconds left on the clock. Up goes Piers for the mere formality of claiming his 10 pyramid points and setting off the firework display. King of the hill. Meg and Mum delighted with that result. Meanwhile, Matthew's got his work cut out to try and score five points at the Wolf's expense. And look at Wolf, expert timing for that interception. Matthew slips his grip, but the Wolf's there again to impede his progress. Matthew again trying for the top, and you get the feeling Wolf's toying with him. Wolf looking to spiral him down the stairs. Matthew's an expert climber, used to a grappling hook, but not used to grappling with a wolf. The old fella matching Matthew step for step, and it looks like Matthew's going to have trouble making his point on this pyramid. Oh, heaves him down. Oh, mind me, face wolf. I need it from the acting career. Back to base camp, but that's about it for this event. Fine work from the wolf and played it very fair. There's the hooter. And there's the winner. And there's the wolf's opinion of the contender. Matthew looking to mix it. This could be interesting. Oh, more like embarrassing for Wolf. Oh, dear. John Anderson's going to have to get stuck in and sort this out. Oh, Matthew getting some stuff as well. Oh, Piers, that was a nice, easy one. Oh, no, it's, it's never easy, but a bit of fast footing, and uh, I thought I might get him, but then he lunged at me, and, well... He sort of got hold of me, and I was already up on the red, so... Well, young man, young man, oh, what were yeah. you? You didn't want to be doing that. No, I completely forgot. I, it's I do, very unlike I, I you. I do apologise, but he did not frighten me, John Anderson, to let me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, likely. Here you go, Piers. Yeah, well done to Piers, ten points. 
Thank you. If we left you out there for another minute or two, would you still have got to the top of the pyramid? There's always one big bully on the bouncy castle, isn't there? <laughs> Next time, mate. Wolf, was he too easy? Hey? He was insulting me all the time, you know? Calling me a sissy. <laughs> Everyone knows I'm not a sissy. What was your plan on the pyramid? How are you going to get past Wolf? Well, I was hoping it'd die of old age before, uh, before I got to the top. <laughs> Wolf, he's still insulting you. Think you're funny. I don't think I'm funny. I think you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I think that's enough of that. Let's hear it for Matthew and Wolf! And while we hear it for them, let's look at the scores. Piers leaps to 12 points, and Matthew has still to score. Our first female contender on Hang Tough is Audrey! <laughs> and she'll be facing Fox! Fox's first Hang Tough in competition comes from Southampton, and her credentials are impeccable. Which is more than can be said for that bloke in the leprechaun outfit. But Audrey's family don't seem bothered about this brush with the fox, despite the fact she stands an impressive 1 metre 75 tall and weighs in at 67 kilos. Three, two, one. So, Fox swings out, knowing she's 5 centimetres taller than Audrey and 8 kilos heavier. Audrey could do with the 10 points, which are beckoning at Fox's platform, or at least 5 for hanging about in the scoring zone for the full Monty. The Vixen, on the other hand, will be looking for victory. Audrey swinging straight into trouble there, both sharing a red ring. Audrey's all smiles, but looks like the end. The Fox will finish it. Oh, the girl from the Emerald Isle reaches the end of the road. And once the Fox brought her legs into play, Audrey did the sensible thing and surrendered to save her energy for the Eliminator. Our second female contender is Non. And she's up against Rebel. And a rousing chorus for the Rebel. Already seen her in action tonight on the Pyramid. Posts some fine facts and figures against the tape measure. She manages 180 centimetres. While standing on the scale, she weighs 70 kilos. So according to my calculations, Rebel's 20 centimetres taller than Non and 10 kilos heavier. There's a minute for Non to get over and on to the Rebels platform. In case you're wondering, Non is named after Saint Non, who was the mother of Saint David. So there you go. But Non looks to be one ringed up there at the moment, which ought to please Rebel. Rebels in her second season of Glad's already established as a takedown specialist in this event. Non grabs a ring, Rebel's getting close. I'm looking for a way through, and Rebel getting untidy up there. Non makes a break to her right into the scoring zone. If she can hang about there for another 20, she can claim five points. Rebel trying to get back on terms. Non looking anything but nonchalant. Rebel on track, and Non stalled. The time's ticking down. Non moving on, and moving down. Oh, Non drops, misses her ring, loses the points. I'll be better look. Let's see it again. Non gets stuck for momentum and becomes non-aligned when she reaches for a ring. Very unlucky. No points in Hang Tough means the scores are the same. Audrey 8, Non 17. Back to Jezza. We've seen the girls. Now it's time to check out the boys. Our first male contender is Piers. And he's up against Hunter. Let's check out Piers Taylor the tape. The Copthorn former model is a part-time student, stands 187 centimetres tall and weighs 81 kilos. Now the opposition is a handsome hero who's three centimetres taller and 22 kilos heavier. Oh, that's not funny. This, in theory, shouldn't take too long. Hunter, a superb star gladiator with a huge following, and his powers on the rings are rapidly becoming the stuff of legend. Piers teaches water skiing at American summer camps, but he'll be trying to stay high and dry on Hank Tough tonight as Hunter moves in. Hunter almost within striking distance, scheming all the time, an expert when it comes to taking them down. It appears that Piers is in no man's land, unable to make a move on the scoring zone. So Hunter decides to make a move on him. Legs up, but can't lock him up. Hunter going one-handed, grabs a piece. Can he take him? He can! Piers is wisely out of there, and the Hunter gets his man. 
Pierce needed to be primed for the takedown, so Hunter bravely commits to a single-handed swing, steadies his man and lets the legs do the rest. Our second male contender is Matthew! And he's facing the wall! Wolf back in action against his nemesis in this show, Matthew. Matthew lives in South London, stands 190 and weighs 82 kilos. What about the dog of war, that fanged fiend of the scoundrel in the headscarf? Well, he's seven centimetres shorter, but 13 kilos heavier. Now, Wolf is still smarting from that embarrassment at the foot of the pyramid where he dived at Matthew. Matthew ducked and Wolf went completely over the top, as he's inclined to do, so the hound from hell will be looking to force feed Matthew a serving of Matt. Matthew swings left and the Wolf is straight onto his scent, tries to latch on with the legs, but Matthew slips him once again, one-handed Matthew out of reach. The Wolf needs to reassess, he also needs to face the rock and play. Matthew outside the scoring zone, coming up on 30 seconds. Matthew gearing up for a big swing, and he's got a red ring. Wolf backtracking, he can't afford another humiliation. And Matthew pulling faces at Wolf. Waving him goodbye as the Wolf's platform is within his grasp. This could be the upset of the season so far. Matthew a swing away from victory. Is he there? He's nearly there. He's there, touches down. Whatever the Wolf does now won't count. Ten points to Matthew. A superb swinger on those rings. <laughs> Wolf drags him down, but the damage has been done. And Matthew's army of all sorts hail their hero. A magnificent performance from Matthew. Wolf's claiming victory. He's in for a shock. You lost! You lost! You lost! You lost! You lost! You check the rules! And I'm the referee! You lost! You lost! Matthew, uh, you seem to enjoy that. I think he lost. I was waiting for him to come up to me. He's such a big wuss, isn't he? He keeps on saying that I wasn't on. I think he's got a bit of a complex, you see. When a wolf starts getting a little bit agitated, he starts making mistakes. But he's getting old, you see. He's just too old, and he's, you know, long in the tooth. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> wolf, 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 wolf. <laughs> wolf, you haven't got a lot to say about this event, then. The referee's wrong! Oh, Wolf, I just think you're a bad loser. Wolf! These two colours are yellow and red. At this stage, you're getting the yellow, but if you don't behave, you'll get the red. Let's hear it for Matthew. Matthew scores 10 points! Thank you very much. Ow! Not you as well. The scores. Pierce stays on 12, Matthew moves up to 10. While the wolf cools off, we're going into a break. But join us afterwards for the Eliminator, here on Gladiators! Sky Cinema presents The Great Toon Takeover. Hey, everybody! Come on in! Hey, yo, everybody! Ha! The whole family's coming. Yes! Things are gonna get messy. Going to be spicy, no? <laughs> Time. Now, in the women's event, Nons on 17 points, Audrey's on 8 points. That's a 9-point difference, giving Non a 4.5-second head start. Jeremy's with the girls. Non, what's with all this chalk? What are you expecting? <laughs> um, I just want to make sure I don't slip off anything, just like I did on those rings. Are you worried about any aspect of the Eliminator? Uh, once I get past the rope, I'm happy. My dreaded bit is the beginning, because I'm so, so short that they're taller than me. What about the Travelator at the end? Um, I am quite confident on Travelator. I hope I can get up, get up it the first time. Audrey, four and a half seconds to catch up. Was that too much? Well, I'm just going to try and go steady on them all. I'm going to attack every piece for everything I've got. I'm going to lay my life on the line. Good luck to both of you. Over to the start. Come on, Nod. 
Non's Welsh contingent gearing themselves up for the agonising eliminator ahead. And Audrey's Irish followers sound in pretty good voice as well. Non, you will go on my first whistle. Audrey, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one! Non sets off, having earned herself a four and a half second head start, but Audrey's on her way as well, both vying for a place in the quarterfinals of Gladiators. Audrey's niece, Megan, gets bounced about in the excitement, Non on the top of the net, and Audrey at the bottom, Non going down, Audrey climbing up. Now, Non turns to the rope. Once she's cleared this, she'll be more happy. And so will her sister Maya and brother Owain. The climb allowing Audrey to eat into her lead. Non finishes the rope as Audrey starts it. This is where Audrey can capitalise. Legs up for the heave-ho. Non on the hand ladder, swinging very wide. Here comes Audrey. The gap looks to have closed. Next for Non, the trapeze takes a swing. Good changeover. Audrey slow to dismount the ladder. Finally finds her feet as Non goes for the net. Audrey slow onto the trapeze, makes the changeover. And next it's the net. Non's aware that Audrey's near. Hey, Nonny knows. Audrey's dad there. Joe demanding more effort. The net designed to sap the strength from every muscle in their tortured bodies. Non's at the top, needs to breach the pain barrier. She's to ensure victory for Wales. The zip line will whisk her to the arena floor for three more testing disciplines. Audrey completes the climb. It could be that Non's re established her lead. Splashes down and turns to the seesaws. Audrey sets off down the slide. Here she comes. Leads up. Good landing. And here's where it's been won or lost so many times this season already. And she steps off. Oh, she missed the yellow zone. And John Anderson has sent her back. The family can't believe it. Here comes Audrey. And there goes Non again. Audrey's exploited that mistake by Non. And she's going for the Travelator. Yes, has she got what it takes? And Non's right behind her. Yes, Audrey is through. And it's through the paper burst into the quarterfinals. And the garlands are out for Audrey. What a win. Spare a fall for Non, victory was hers for the taking. This is for me. So, come on. Wise words from the old campaigner John Anderson. Non starts her drive up the Travelator for Wales. She's cracked it. You said to me beforehand, you said, this is my best event, I'm going to get her. Yeah, I knew the Eliminator was a good game for me. I was really focusing on trying to get myself psyched up backstage. I always said that even by coming behind, it's not over yet. You made it very, very exciting indeed. Of course, none made one mistake and not touching the yellow at the end of the balance beams, and you took advantage of that. I couldn't believe my luck. I just saw her going back to the start, and I thought, yes, Audrey, come on, this one's for you. So I went for her. Well, listen, will you bring your crowd back next time? I certainly will bring them. I'll bring more back the next time. Oh, my goodness, I don't think we could take it. Here's your medal. Go for see your mates. Well done, let's hear it for Audrey. Well done. Nun, you must be desperately disappointed. Well, I can't believe it. My foot definitely touched that yellow, I'm sure it did. I'd like to see a replay. But there seemed to be just a few problems on the Travelator as well. That, was that tough? No, I didn't. That was because she'd gone past me. Um, I've never failed on the Travelator before. My confidence went when John Anderson said I didn't hit that yellow. Um, but fair play to Audrey, she caught up and did well. As an eliminator aside, you, you have really enjoyed yourself this evening. Yeah, it's been excellent. Up and down, lots of different emotions. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. You thoroughly deserve this medal. Let's hear it for Nunn! The gong for Nunn, Owain with the whistle, Mayor, Auntie Dwinan, and of course, boyfriend Richard. Here it comes then. Did Nunn's foot touch the yellow? There's the answer. And there's the pride of Wales, the Cardiff Golden Girl. There'll be no singing in the valleys tonight. But there will be celebrations in the Garland camp. Big hugs for her brothers Greg and Paul. And while they pull her out of the arena, there's great news in the fastest eliminator contest. Paula Bush's record of 147.4 is shattered by Audrey's time of 141 dead. Next, it's the turn of the guys. 12-10 the scores. That works out at a single second's head start for Piers. Just a one-second head start. It's not even worth mentioning, is it? No, not really. Not on the Eliminator, anyway. Um, one second's on the beam, and 
It's going to be a good one. I know it's going to be a good one. We certainly hope so. And I mean, is there going to be? Um, are you going to take this one seriously? Or are you going to carry on clowning around like you've been doing? I think I'll have to take it seriously, won't I? I will. I'll, I'll do this the best that I can. And Piers, mate. Nice one. Very best of luck to the two of you. See you both at the end. Great couple of sports. Piers urged on by Mark, Meg, and his mum Rosemary, and giving it plenty for Matthew are his flatmates Kim and Kate. And as they always say, over to John Anderson. Piers, you will go on my first whistle. Matthew, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Piers Bryant gets it going, followed by Matthew Bartlett. We know Piers is fast and Matthew skillful, so this has all the makings of a classic eliminator. Piers at the top of the net as Matthew bounces to join him. And Matthew's friend Jason is right behind him. Piers untidy on the downside, and Matthew drops right in to make it all but level pegging. Rope climb, legs up, and then the pull. Piers by a whisker, hand bike next. Mega Mum won't sit down till it's won. Piers driving hard as Matthew winds it up to get pedaling. Piers with a smoother style on that bike. Easing away again, Matthew awkward as Piers swings out on the trapeze. And the bike taking its toll on Matthew. Now he can swing. Piers network looks good. Matthew having a bad patch at the moment. Even a Bruce Willis lookalike is cheering him on. Piers hits the gantry first. He'll take the furthest zip. Matthew almost at the top. These guys so evenly matched. Piers to the zip. Matthew will be right behind him. Piers looking for a quick turn to the seesaw. It stops on the landing. Can Matthew Jackson slide? He can. Mega Mom can sense victory to Piers. Up the seesaw. Matthew's gaining, slams it down, and Matthew's in trouble. Balance deserts him at the final moment. Oh, they can't believe it as Piers eases the second seesaw down and attacks the Travelator. He's fast, he's strong, he's in the quarterfinals. Piers Bryant from Top 40 Sussex. Mum and Meg happy with that as Matthew swings into second place. Well, Piers, you are one hungry boy. What can I say? He's a mate. And he's a contender. And between the two of us, I hope we put on a good show. Because I'm absolutely whacked. I bet you are. Well, unfortunately, you're going to have to come back and do it all again in the quarterfinals. But uh, <laughs> you've got a crowd that are back there that are dying to. I know. Guys, for everyone who come up to see me, thanks for everything. You guys helped me through. Thank you. And please come back again. Let's hear it for Piers. Matthew, it's been a, a great competition throughout the whole night between yourself and Piers. We got it close towards the end, didn't we? He was always ahead, though. He's a good man. He went for it. Blimey, that handbike takes it out of you. And then, <laughs> all out of breath, and you tried to do the balance beam and then kind of toppled off. That's the trouble, you see? Too much up here. You go off if you're on balance. We just thought you were clowning around again. Oh, no, I kept that one serious. He won that fair and square, he's a good lad. It's been a fantastic effort yeah. by yourself this evening. You thoroughly deserve this medal. Oh. Let's hear it for Matthew! <laughs> Matthew the man says it with a smile and with flowers. Kim and Kate. And Piers takes the cheers. So, if it wasn't for these guys, I wouldn't be halfway around by now. They helped me through. Thank you, everyone. In the contest for the fastest men's eliminator, Anthony Nesbeth is the current champion with 117.2. Piers time four seconds outside that record. Who <laughs> And Matthew still smiling all the way to the end. Well, Jeremy, that shows you it's not over till it's over. <laughs> and it's certainly not over yet. No, we've got more action for you next week, so join us here on Gladiators. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. In a few moments, Jim Bowen and Tony Green are here as three more couples get ready to play Bullseye and try to win a speedboat, probably. Then at nine, four famous faces are waiting to raise money for charity in the Chase Celebrity Special, new to challenge.